Hey guys, it's Mike Check, and today we are checking out Marley braids or Marley twists or whatever. People call them different things, whatever you want to call them. That's what we're checking out. So, first off, before I start, I've tried to make this video at least four times today. And my computer, I'll do the whole entire video, it'll record the whole entire video, and I'll stop it, and it won't save it. Ugh. We're checking out Marley braids, and Marley braids are pretty much like singalese, or, well, I don't know if that's how you say them, or not, but, you know, like the twist, or Havana twist, and stuff like that, except they use Marley braid hair, which, I mean, is where they get their name. And that's pretty much the only difference is the hair. Like always, I'll tell you guys the preparation that I've done to my hair before I put these in. Um, about the hair that I actually used about installation. And then just my general thoughts on the hair and the hairstyle and different things like that. So, to start, we will... I'll tell you guys about my preparation. So, before I put, um, well, before I got them put in, because I didn't do them, my friend did them, but before I got these put in, I just went through my normal wash day routine, and that's pretty much pre-poo, shampoo, condition, and, um, different things like that. So, for my pre-poo, which is pre-shampooing, hence pre-poo, pre-shampoo, it's pretty much deep conditioning before you shampoo so that your hair is moisturized before you shampoo and then the shampoo won't strip as much moisture out of your hair. So what I use is my coconut oil and honey mixture. These are two that I use. I pretty much use any honey. I think it's supposed to be like raw, but this works pretty good. And then this coconut oil I got from Meyer, I think, and it's just, it's by, like, it's right by the olive oil and, like, some seed oil and different stuff like that. I just got this from the cooking aisle. And, um, you can use liquid coconut oil, too. I just had solid kind, so, whatever. Um, so, I use my mixture, I put it in my hair, I leave it on my hair for an hour under a plastic bag, and then I shampoo. The shampoo that I use, breaking stuff, the shampoo that I use is Herbal Essences Hello Hydration. Um, and it has coconut extract in it, and it says that it guarantees 100% softer in one wash. And I know, I know, guys, don't, like, beat me or cuss me out or anything, because I know this has sulfur in it. It is not a sulfate-free shampoo but I had it around and it moisturizes my hair like it's very very good product and it's cheap so and I just don't have time to go find a good clarifying shampoo or um like a sulfate free shampoo because I'm busy and I'm a college student, and if I can use something for free, it's, I'd rather not go buy it. If you so. do know a cheap, um, sulfate-free shampoo or clarifying shampoo, leave it in the comments below, and keyword is cheap, because I am a college student, and I don't have money to spend on random crap, so, yeah. Um, so I shampoo, and then I condition, and I use Hello Hydration um conditioner as well this is actually a really 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 good conditioner it's not like all natural and everything like that but it has great slip and is very moisturizing like very 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 moisturizing um and i've actually seen this on some like natural hair websites and different stuff like that so i might not have the natural product down with the shampoo but this is a very very good conditioner so I would definitely recommend that. Um, and then I also, I don't know why I use two conditioners, but I do. But 
The second conditioner I use is Organics, and this one is the Scalp Therapy, or Scalp Therapy, oh yeah, I said it right, I don't know, it's been a long day. Um, I use the Scalp Therapy Australian Tea Tree Conditioner, it has willow bark extract, tea tree oil, argan oil, and neem oil, I guess that's how you say it, neem, whatever. So this would be really good for co-washing, I do use it for co-washing, but I use it on, on my wash day too, just because... It tingles, and I like the way, like, it makes my scalp feel refreshed. I'm just weird like that. So, I use those two. And then, after that, I use my Afoji Keratin 2-Minute Reconstructor. I talked about this in my last video, but I didn't have the bottle with me. But this is what it looks like. And it says that it adds strength and softness in one step. Quick and effective against heat and chemical damage. So it has like keratin and amino acids, botanical oils, vitamins, protein in it. I probably wouldn't recommend you use this every wash day if you're protein sensitive. Well, it depends on how often you wash your hair. I usually wash my hair maybe two weeks or three weeks. So like once or twice a month. And I use this every time, and my hair is really thick and everything, and not protein sensitive at all. So I use this, but Afoji, most of their products have protein in it. So if you are going to use Afoji, just make sure you're not protein sensitive so you don't damage your hair. But I'm transitioning right now. Actually, in about a week, I'll be transitioning for a year. So that's very, very exciting. And um, I'm transitioning from heat damage or heat training or whatever you want to call it because my ends are not split or damaged or dry or brittle. But when I wash my hair, you can clearly see where it has grown out and then my ends are very straight. And once I started using this, my ends, sorry, once I started using this, my ends have actually become wavy and like a little bit curly so I can definitely tell that it's doing something. I'm still going to cut off my ends because there's no way they're going to revert back to my curl pattern but at least I know that it's doing something and if it's helping my straight ends become back curly then I know it's good for you know my natural texture. So I do that, leave it in for two minutes like it says, rinse it, rinse it out and then after I rinse that out I usually use my conditioners again just to add moisture back in because it does have protein and protein can dry your hair out. So then after I do all that, I um, use the lock method. So liquid, I just use water. Then oil, I use my oil mixture. And I believe I don't really have like a set recipe that I use. I kind of just put stuff in this bottle and put it on my head. But um, I believe this is olive oil, vitamin E oil, and hot six oil, and tree tree oil. Um, I wish I had liquid coconut oil and I would add it in there because my hair loves coconut oil. But like I said, I don't have money to just spend for no reason when I could just not put it in there. It's not really a big deal. So I put the oil, seal my ends, oil my scalp. And then for cream, I use the trusty Shea Butter Leave-In Conditioner Repair Cream because it's amazing and I use it for absolutely everything. And it makes my hair so soft, so. I use that. And then let it dry overnight. I wash my hair the night before and then just let it dry. And that's pretty much all I do to prepare my hair, just... When you're going into a protective style, just lots and lots of moisture. Make sure your hair is prepared to stay in one style for a long time, especially with synthetic hair because synthetic hair can take moisture out of your hair. The hair that I used, this I this was actually my first time using this brand. I've had Marley braids once before in September. So um, that was a little while ago. And I use a different brand of hair, but it's still the same kind of hair. It's still Marley hair. So this brand is 
Diana, I believe. And then the hair is called Hip Hop Braid hair. So you can see that it's Marley Braid. And then this color is 33. I actually have three colors in my head right now, and I'll explain why later. But I'll just show you the texture of this hair. This is the texture. It looks a lot like natural African American hair. So like it's pretty it's pretty coarse. And it feels pretty rough. Just compare it to, you know, like straight hair or like the other synthetic hairs, which are pretty smooth. And that's what gives it its natural look. So I really actually like that a lot. And that's why I like these better than like single leaf twists or um, Havana twists or different stuff like that. I've never had those, but I just like the way this hair looks. So this pack was $5.99. And I just got it from my local beauty supply store. Now, the colors that I used were 33, which is the color I just showed you. It's Dark Auburn, I believe is the name of it. But it um it looks red in some light, and then it looks brown in other light, and I kind of like that. So, that's this color. So, you see, like, back here... It kind of like has a red tint, but then when I bring it under my desk light, it looks brown. Then I used 27, which is just blonde, this color. And then I used 30, which is this darker color, and that lighter color is 27. They actually have ombre Marley Bray hair, which I think is the coolest thing ever. But I found that hair at a beauty supply closer to my house, my original house. And um, that's about an hour away from school. And I live on campus. And I was getting my hair done on campus. And I wasn't going to drive an hour just to get that ombre hair, even though I thought about it. I really but I was did. getting my hair done that night, so I didn't have time to, like, order it or go drive and get it and stuff. So, I just decided to do, like, an ombre effect from back to front. And I'll show you what the back looks like. And then the side. And this side. And pretty much what I did, so the back I mixed 33 and 30 all through the back. And then to go like make it ombre, I did 30 and 27. And then I did straight 27. So it kind of goes dark to light, you know. So, um, sorry. One thing about this hair is that it gets caught on everything. Everything. Like it like you just saw, it was it's caught on my necklace. And it gets caught on like the clasp in the back. It gets caught on my earrings sometimes. Depends on what earrings I wear. If I when I'm zipping up my coat, it gets caught in the zipper. It's oh, that's one thing. That's but that's like the only bad thing about this hair besides that i absolutely love it because it's so coarse it makes it way easier to put it in a bun and different stuff like that because you don't have to use bobby pins or you know more than one rubber band or scrunchy um and it just stays that's it's so great so installation um my friend actually did it i do not do my own protective styles i probably should learn but I'm just lazy and busy, and I don't have time, and I feel like it'd be faster if somebody else did it versus me sitting there trying to do it myself. So, my friend on campus, shout out to her. She's a wonderful, wonderful person. 
and she did my hair. It took about six hours, and like I said before, I've had these before in September, and my other friend actually did it. It's good to know people that know how to do things you don't know how to do. Trust me. So, um, but they had two different installation methods. There are two methods to put these in. One starts with a braid and then goes into a twist, and one um, starts from a twist. So, my friend that did these, she started from a twist, and this is pretty much what it looks like. If this was the color of my hair, it would blend in and just look more natural. So you start from a twist, and it's a twist all the way down. My um, Marley twist in September, she started from a braid. So it would be just like you're doing a box braid. And it would start from a braid, and then end about here. And then go into the twist. And then you just braid until the hair is secure, and then you can go into the twist. I was kind of nervous about this installation method because I've heard that it's not as secure as starting with the braid. But these are pretty secure. Like, I've had them for about a week so far. And none of them have come out. And, um, yeah, so I haven't really had a problem with them yet. I know I've only had them for a week, so we'll see what happens. But I think this is pretty secure. I absolutely love them, and it's one thing because the hair already looks really natural and already like a little bit fuzzy. When your hair grows out and like some of your hair starts to stick out, it doesn't look bad because the hair already looks like that. So I feel like you can wear these longer because they don't look old. They just, you know, if they get frizzier, they still look the same. Versus like Senegalese or something that's smoother that when your hair starts to frizz out, you can definitely tell um, your hair from the synthetic hair. So that's one thing that I like about these. I'm going to try to keep these in for a month. That's how long I usually keep my twist and my like box braids and things in. Um, I'll be a year transitioning next week which I'm very very excited about I'll probably make a video that day just about like my hair journey and just talking because I like to talk so I'll probably make a video on that and then I think I'm gonna straighten it to see how long it is and then probably cut it all off well cut off my straightens anyway but we'll see we'll see and then I'm also starting um hairfinity which I'm very excited about. And I'll make a video, like a before and after video about that. So, yeah, lots of lots of exciting hair things coming up in my future. Um, So, yeah, let me know what you guys think about these. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comments box. And like, subscribe. You know what, you know, you know what to do. And... Also, as always, follow me on Instagram um, at MikeCheck12, that's M-I-C-C-H-E-C-K-K, -K, number one and the number two. Alright guys, thanks for watching, you guys have a good one, MikeCheck out.